Hey everybody, it's Kevin Carr, and today we're going to talk about dumbbell snatches. The dumbbell snatch is what we call an accessory power exercise, meaning it's probably not the first choice we're going to use for our athletes or adult clients, but we're going to use it to fill the gaps when we have injuries or we're limited on equipment, right? So for our athletes, our first choice is often going to be a hang clean or some sort of jump variation as it's going to transfer best to sport. And for our general population clients, our number one heavy employment power choice is often a kettlebell swing. But sometimes we have to use a dumbbell snatch, and it's still a really valuable tool in our training toolbox, right? So with some of our athletes, maybe they have a wrist injury or they don't have access to a barbell, so they can't hang clean. Or for some of our general population clients, they might have a back injury or they don't have access to a kettlebell, so they can't do a kettlebell swing. The dumbbell snatch is going to be a great alternative for both of those exercises. It's also going to be really useful when you just have limited equipment. All you need is one dumbbell. So we're often going to use it for our beginning athletes, our athletes who are training away from the gym, or people who are limited by injuries, right? So with a dumbbell snatch, you're just going to start with a moderate or lightweight dumbbell, something that you can move pretty quickly, something you can learn with, and then you can always add more weight as you go. What we want to do is we want to get them in a slight hinge position, similar to how we would start a hand clean, right? So the dumbbell is going to be between the legs. We don't want it outside the legs. We want it so it's positioned between the knees. Right, And we're going to get them into a slight hinge. So if I show you from the side here, I'm sliding down so that dumbbell's right about at my knees. I don't want it way down here. This is going to be pretty inefficient to pull the dumbbell up. I want to think right around knee height, butt back, nice straight line from my head to my butt. And then I want to think about jumping and shrugging and trying to get as tall as I can. I want to think about trying to get triple extension through my toes, my ankles, my knees, my hips all the way tall, so if I were to freeze a photo, if you were to take a bunch of pictures and you freeze framed, there's a picture like this where my elbow is still straight and I'm fully extending before that dumbbell goes up and I sit and catch underneath, right? It's a full body movement, although the weight is in the hand, I'm getting the power from my hips, my lower body, and through my trunk. That's why it's such a valuable power exercise, right? When I pull it, I want to think about keeping that dumbbell as close to my body as we can. We want it to move in a straight line. That's going to be the quickest path to move the dumbbell. It's going to be the way we can put the most power from our lower body and into, my, into our hands, right? So I'll show you a couple reps from the side, and I'll show you a couple reps from the front. Again, starting between the knees, I'm going to pull, catch up over my head, lower it down, back down here. Again, watch how close that dumbbell stays, and look how I catch it straight up over my shoulder here. Okay, I'll show you from the front. Again, it's in between the knees. I'm gonna hinge down, jump, catch, down slowly. Okay, here, jump, catch, down slowly. Remember, with our heavy implement power exercise, speed kills. We wanna see high rate of speed, right? We wanna put the most power into the weight as possible. We don't want them lugging it up slowly. We wanna see them jerk it quick, catch, down, okay? Practice form first, make sure you get that form down to keep the bell tight, then slowly add weight, and we're gonna see, you're gonna get a lot of great power output, a lot of great power development with using nothing more than a simple dumbbell.